Hi guys, this is Bob again in Southern Indiana, N9KR, and I thought today we'd just take a look at uh, building a DDS VFO on the cheap. Um, this can be used for your QRP station uh, in the transceiver mode or standalone mode for the receiver and or the transmitter or a great bench test tool to generate uh, sine wave or square wave signals from just about zero up to about 50 megahertz. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, take a closer look at what we've built here and how we did it and hopefully it'll give uh, some ideas and some inspiration to folks that might be thinking about that. So on the bench we have uh, two of the uh, of the DDS control modules that, that I built uh, over the past couple of years and I've actually got a third one that's set up in my QRP station. But they're very similar. Um, using uh, total component uh, cost is about $25 each, including the fact that I had some junk chassis available. The one on the left was a uh, an old uh, electronic keyer, and the one on the right was a generic chassis that I had um, available to use. Um, right now, these guys are uh, both on. Uh, the one on the left is. Uh, primarily used for uh, bench testing and also there's a QRSS mode that that they both have that will set this up occasionally and it's kind of a whole different area but it's basically a low power um, uh, slow very slow uh, uh, tra amateur transmission that's kind of uses some dedicated frequencies and watering holes on all the bands and you basically uh, uh, set your transmitter up as a as a beacon and then go on out to various websites around the world and look and see if uh, if anybody can see your signal and how strong it is and and the parameters of it compared with other folks it's kind of an interesting little sideline hobby for me um, here is uh, this is actually our workbench over on the scope I currently have a signal being generated on that DDS VFO on the left and as you can see we're set at a hundred kilohertz change right now and as I as I vary the the control knob on the front, we're going way high up in frequency, up to over 40, 40 megahertz, and then on down again, all the way down to almost uh, about 1 megahertz. Um, controlling that with this front control knob here. In this case, we're putting out just about uh, uh, 2 volts peak to peak, uh, pretty flat across the band, and a very excellent looking sine wave as you can see. The generator will also put out a square wave which we have not used but uh, that 2 volt peak signal is more than ample for almost any uh, bench test uh, testing that we would do. Okay so let's take a look at this bad boy with the cover off and see what we got here. And of the three that I've built they're all three very much the same as this. The key components inside this are the AT Mega 328 microprocessor which is in the center right here can be very bare bones in this case uh, we've got an almost bare bones microprocessor with the correct uh, bootloader the Ar Ar Arduino bootloader loaded up and then the only other components really are a crystal oscillator at 16 megahertz and a few capacitors um, but that's that's the key and of course the software is the big key to make this whole thing work module down here with a capacitor that you can see that's overly large, that's the only .01 I had at that time I believe, is the uh, that's the AD9850 uh, module that's available uh, overseas uh, on eBay in China I've, I've got them as cheap as four dollars and fifty eight cents delivered to the door which is amazing and uh, that's a complete uh, DDS uh, uh, VFO, it'll generate sine waves and square waves from about 1 megahertz up to about 40 or 50 usable and uh, at an output without amplification of about 0.8 uh, volts peak to peak which is just about right to drive uh, uh, QRP uh, rigs, uh, receivers and transmitters and it works just terrific. works great as a bench test uh, generator as well. Uh, over on the right that small module is a actually it's a USB interface module uh, USB to a serial so we can get data in and out of uh, the microprocessor and up on the front here is the uh, LCD it's a 16 by 2 LCD display about two dollars and seventy five cents on eBay um, 
they come in uh, they're backlit and they come in uh, a green and black and a blue and some other colors we usually use the blue or the or the black and green um, and uh, there's on the back the, the components on the back of the the uh, connectors on the back is the USB on the right, then there's a, a variable pot for the uh, uh, the uh, brightness on the LCD display, uh, 12 volts in and out, the output signal, and there's a uh, input jack here uh, that comes from the keyer so that uh, the system will know uh, every time we're sending a dit or a da to uh, offset the uh, output signal by 700 hertz, so that gives us our, our keyed offset in CW. And that's adjustable in software. I picked 700 hertz. It seems to be kind of my sweet spot. Um, but uh, so there we there we go. There's there's that. Now the individual components that make this guy up. Uh, here's a uh, encoder. I, buy, I bought this probably the most expensive component. 64-bit uh, resolution. This is a uh, well. I found these on eBay. Um, they end up being about 10 bucks a piece. There's a 12 volt SAN and there's a couple of outputs that get fed directly to the Arduino, to the microprocessor. Here's the LCD display. This is a black and green one. As I said, these are about 250 each. Here's some of the 18 mega 328 processors. These already have the bootloader code uh, loaded. You can do that yourself. It's free. Um, here's an example of the uh, AD9850 uh, module. Uh, in this case, uh, it's about $5, 450 I think. We bought some of those keep some of those available. Uh, additionally, uh, the Arduino itself will come comes as a complete um, uh, prototype type module. Here's a, uh, AT, a 328. It comes with a set number of analog input and output and digital I.O. pins. Uh, you can go to the um, to the more advanced uh, AT Mega, uh, the Mega uh, board which has a whole lot more digital pins and uh, analog pins and uh, those are getting cheaper. I bought the last two for about $14 a piece, so we have those to use as well. Okay, so I thought we'd finish up by uh, taking a look at uh, how I've got this DDS VFO incorporated into my homebrew uh, station. Uh, we're using it, uh, I have a, a 9 megahertz IF set up that I use on the receiver and the transmitter uh, side. And so we're using this one VFO to control both. Uh, it's a transceive mode. Uh, the software, as I said, is the key component. And this software was written uh, almost entirely, uh, what I'm using, uh, by Ross Keating up in New England. He has a website called theladderline.com. And uh, Ross wrote this about, uh, I think, 2010 is when he finished the final version of it. It includes transceive mode. It includes a QRSS function and lots of, lots of goodies. Uh, that just make it a pleasure to use, and so I've uh, I've uh, I've got it set up as I said in my homebrew station, and uh, right now we're sitting on 40 meters, and I thought I'd demonstrate just a couple of the features. You can find a signal here. Uh, one of the bandwidth choices is you can cycle through uh, anything anywhere from 100 kilohertz down to 1 hertz on the bandwidth, and it just cycles through with a bandwidth button here. So now we're down to one. We back up to the high end, 100 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz. 100 hertz and down to 10. I usually run it on 10 hertz. Uh, so you can find, so you can find somebody here. Somebody calling CQ. So we can cycle through the different bandwidth choices. There's a RIT function, receive incremental tuning. If I hit the RIT, I can then tune the receiver without affecting the transmit frequency at all. And it's unlimited. I can go down as far as I want in kilohertz and, and on the plus side. Somebody calling our CQ or AJR, W9AJR. So that's our, our, our RIT function and we hit it again to drop out of there. On the mode side I can hit the mode. That's QRSS mode which is a great uh, uh, actually a whole different subject but it's low low power uh, low speed, slow speed uh, uh, CW and there's a bunch of frequencies that are kind of watering holes for that and you can put your little low power transmitter in the QRSS mode and go out and monitor websites and see uh, certain websites to see how well you're being received at various points in the world. We've experimented with that some. It's kind of fun. Uh, 
Memory choices is a bunch of, I think there's a hundred memories built in. I typically use four or five. And uh, we can pick one of the memory choices that you have programmed, then it will take you to a different frequency band. In my case, I include the 9 megahertz offset. It's built in. So if I pick, uh, for instance, uh, memory choice number five, uh, that should take me to uh, 20 meters. Yep, there we go, 20 meters. And uh, I actually have uh, switching built in for the receive and the transmit function, so it switches everything for me. The only other thing I would have to switch would be the antenna. A little bit of activity on 20 meters today. But that uh, the memory functions are, are, are uh, real handy. And we've got all of our key uh, bands programmed, programmed in the system for that. So the accuracy is great, terrific. There's a calibration mode where you can calibrate down to just a couple of hertz. The drift is negligible, if anything, uh, maybe just a few hertz after a uh, short warm-up. And uh, we're just real happy with this, uh, with this DDF VFO. We drive everything with the output directly from that module, and it's just about 0.8 volts peak-to-peak, -peak, and in my setup it works just great. So there you go. Uh, put uh, Put $25 down on the various components and uh, get them on in there. And if you have a, a junk chassis and a few other oddball uh, parts around that you'll need, you can, you can build this, uh, download the software, and uh, experiment and uh, build yourself a nice bench test uh, VFO or a, or a nice uh, VFO for a, for a QRP or a homebrew station. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time, and we'll go into, uh, we'll go into something else here in some detail for you. Good night, guys.